Shadow Binders is back in stock on shopclownfish.com. That's shopclownfish.com. And now on with the show. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, and we're going to talk about Netflix and video games. Uh, yeah, Netflix is going to get into video games because why the hell not? Everybody is getting into video games, even companies that really don't know how to make or how to sell or distribute video games. So we're going to talk about that. And then we're going to talk about the Steam Deck. Uh, the Steam Deck had a huge, uh, huge debacle. Uh, the Steam Deck, of course, is Valve's new Switch competitor. I guess it's a Switch competitor, a handheld PC for $399, and I guess the pre-order uh, pre-orders did not go well. Did not go well. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about that before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're over 206,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. Greatly appreciated we do talk about video games we talk about pop culture we talk about whatever interests us that day we talk a lot about netflix and streaming and this doesn't surprise me it should surprise me but netflix wants to get in to video games now i think they did minecraft story mode a couple of years ago but that really wasn't a game so much as a choose your own adventure uh telltale game right it wasn't really like what i would consider a video game but everybody is getting into gaming or trying to get into streaming gaming including stadia uh, stadia which did not do well it launched i don't think nobody's talking about it other than to joke about it uh, amazon's trying to do something similar they all want to get into streaming gaming or whatever uh, now netflix is trying to get into it but it's interesting, Yahoo Finance said that analysts are saying Netflix getting into gaming is going to be DOA. It's going to be dead on arrival. So get this, they said Netflix announced it's moving into the gaming sector with the hire of a 30-year gaming industry veteran, former EA and Oculus executive Mike Verdu. However, some experts believe that the move into the cutthroat gaming industry won't pan out for the content platform. This thing is dead on arrival. It will not work, says Michael Pactor, senior analyst at Wedbush. Uh, have me back and we'll talk about Mike Verdu's departure and the exit of Netflix in the gaming business. Pactor joined Yahoo Finance Live to discuss Netflix's content strategy in light of this announcement, as well as what it means for the broader gaming industry. Probably not much. Uh, to be honest, it, it's not going to mean much. The push into gaming serves as another indicator that the company may be looking to broaden its avenues for revenue. The news comes after Netflix's announcement just last week that hired and Jerry Eaton, former head of content for Apple Podcasts, to head its own podcast operation. So what do you do when you hit the ceiling? What do you do when You've got everybody in the world who wants Netflix, who can get Netflix, is already subscribed to Netflix. What do you do? Well, you start to get into other stuff because they've hit a ceiling and, and they just keep cranking out content. And they've got to compete with companies like Disney and Comcast and Warner who have other things. Netflix doesn't have anything else. Netflix has Netflix and that's it. Disney's got their theme parks and they got their movies and they got their merchandise and their comic books and their video games that they're licensing out. And, uh, you know, these other companies have other stuff other than streaming. They're getting into streaming too. So Netflix is like, well, damn, we're the biggest streamer, but we don't have anything else going for us. Uh, in any case, Pactor said that Netflix's decision to hire Verdu specifically for the role in leading its gaming startup initiative may not have been the best choice. He keeps changing jobs. He's a good game maker, but his last good game was in 2001, so I'm really surprised they picked him. He's just not the right guy to head up a startup initiative by Netflix. Disney has failed at it three times. None of the major companies other than Warner Brothers have had successful games. Yeah, Disney, they actually dipped out of gaming. They shut down Disney Interactive, uh, I believe, because Bob Iger... It was like, hey, it's cheaper just to have EA do our games. Uh, and at that point in time, Disney Infinity was actually doing very, very well. Uh, I think it was actually ahead of like Lego Dimensions and Skylanders, if I remember correctly. It was doing well, and Disney pulled the plug. They're like, yeah, it's just the margins aren't there. You know, they don't, 
uh, these companies don't really know how to get into to games that much. Now, Warner Brothers, it shouldn't surprise anyone that they kind of get it with games to some degree because, I mean, they've got Midway. But Warner Brothers owned Atari back in the day, too. Now, I think they owned Atari when uh, the bubble burst, but still, like, they've, they've got more experience making games. Uh, implications for the gaming industry. Although the details surrounding what gaming through Netflix will look like have yet to be released, Pactor is skeptical of Netflix's ability to break into the market and deliver a cohesive product. As am I. I don't think this is going to go well. I think they're going to play around with it, make everybody go out and buy a special controller, and then I think it's going to go belly up. According to him, there may be a scenario in which Netflix offers a separate remote for purchase in order to play games. There we go. Uh, through the platform, which will make for an incremental purchase for customers. Yeah, Amazon had this with their Fire TV. And I actually bought games for Fire TV, and I bought the controller for the Fire TV because uh, they had, like, the Sega collection for it, and they had a couple retro games. I'm like, yeah, it's kind of cool. I don't have to switch to a console. I can just play right on the Fire TV stick. And then when they updated the Fire TV and we had to go buy a 4K stick, the controller didn't work on it anymore, and now it just seems like they don't really care. They don't really care about it, but they're going to do something else with gaming. Uh, I find it really odd that Netflix thinks it's going to work, he added. What's particularly confusing to me, what are they going to offer? Streaming on your TV? Please tell me how you're going to control the games because your remote control is very limited. Well, no, you're going to have to go buy a special Netflix controller for 60 bucks, probably. Uh, Pactor believes that because the Netflix initiative will be such an abstract failure, it will not pose any threat to competitors like Microsoft, uh, etc. Uh, as for what he thinks Netflix may be trying to accomplish in the long term with the push to offer podcasts and video games, Pactor said it's to become a comprehensive entertainment solution. Yeah, I agree. I think that Netflix is looking for more revenue because they know they've hit a ceiling. Uh, they know they've hit a, a ceiling. But he also said, hey, Netflix subscribers don't need Netflix to facilitate their exposure to games. So the only value Netflix has is if they leverage their own IP, such as uh, Stranger Things or Bridgerton. I don't think Bridgerton can be a game that will be hot, but it won't be fun. Oh, we could do an anime version of it, couldn't we? An anime, oh, that's problematic. Uh, anyway, so speaking of other potential failures, uh, Valve is, is offering the Steam Deck a 399 Nintendo Switch-like PC console. It's coming out in December. Now, we've got the, God, I can't even remember the name of it, the, uh, the Valve console that lets you uh, stream the games from your PC onto your TV, and it sits in the drawer and it collects dust. Uh, we've used it like five or six times. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, we usually just play on PC. So I don't know if this is going to take off or not, but apparently they're having issues with pre-orders. Coming from comicbook.com, uh, pre-orders for the new handheld Valve console known as Steam Deck Steam Deck went live this afternoon, as we have come to expect from purchasing situations like this. The process of trying to acquire one went south. Not only did Valve's own interface essentially crash the moment the pre-orders began, but those looking to pick up the new hardware ran into a number of other issues. Likely the most notable problem that many ran into when trying to buy it came with actually finalizing a purchase. While the process of adding a unit to the cart wasn't difficult, Valve's interface was regularly blocking people from finishing their orders due to a supposed high number of attempts. Conversely, some others were met with error pages that simply told them that something went wrong. As a whole, the pre-order process for the Steam Deck was a hot mess, and even those who were able to get one had problems at some point. Uh, yeah, the Steam Deck website exploded immediately. You think... They couldn't purchase one. I think I think uh, Notch tried to buy one. The Minecraft guy, and he couldn't buy one either. I saw that on Twitter. Uh, something went wrong. Something went wrong. Nothing brings the gaming community together like screaming at pre-orders, error screens, just attempting to, to purchase one. Well, I guess it's off to eBay. There you go, guys. Uh, Steam, something went wrong with your purchase. Try again in a minute. Looks like you've been attempting a lot of purchases. Please wait a while before trying again. Uh, yeah, everybody's trying to pre-order it with the minimum deposit. Everybody right now. I, I have zero interest in this. Why are so many people trying to buy one of these? I don't think I, I don't think it's it looks that hot. I really don't. I mean, I really don't. I've got a laptop. I've got a desktop. 
they play the games just fine and I can upgrade them. You know, I don't know what the deal is with the uh, the Steam Deck. Just everybody is like, well, it's going to be the Switch killer. I'm like, nah, I don't think so. Uh, so according to Comic Book Resources, the price is painful. Um, it's painful. They said, while well, it's expensive, it's expensive. The device has long-term benefits and high-quality technology. Um, yeah, I, I'm just, I'm curious because, again, you know, we're talking PC games and you can't upgrade this thing as far as I know, right? So Valve President Ga Gabe Newell stated that while the newly announced Steam Deck's price point may be painful, the price reflects a very aggressive long-term strategy. So you'll be playing outdated PC games in like five years, right? I mean, it makes sense with the Switch because Nintendo's never really been up on the latest technology, but PC games, you need the latest technology. Are you gonna, are you gonna be able to play Cyberpunk on this thing? I don't know if you're gonna be able to play Cyberpunk on this thing. Um, so yeah, it sounds like they're taking a hit uh, on the device to build the user base, which Sony has done before. They actually would sell PlayStations at a loss, if I remember correctly. I think it was a PS2 and the PS3. Sold them at a loss because they knew once everybody had one, they'd go buy games. And the games were relatively cheap to manufacture. I don't, I don't have any interest in this. Do you have any interest in this? Let me know. Let me know. Because I looked at this, I'm like, eh, whatever. Whatever. I don't care. We've got multiple switches and we've got lots of gaming PCs. I don't need one of these. But I guess if you don't have a gaming PC and you want to play, you know, five-year-old PC games, go for it, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.